I would like to talk about two main types of exercises for vestibular rehab. These are very useful in treating dizziness. The first type is what we call adaptation, and the second type is called habituation. Our body actually has a very amazing system to help us with our balance. We use our vision, which is our eyesight. We use our vestibular input. Uh, there are these uh, organs in our ear that tells us about balance. And then we also use something called peripheral sensory, meaning our hands and our feet. We have these sensors uh, that these three inputs go into our brain and our body has an amazing way to process these signals to keep our balance. So the first function of this uh, balance system is to keep our gaze fixed, meaning that your eyes should be able to focus on a point. Mm -hmm. So regardless of my body motion, head motion, I should be able to keep my gaze on that one point. And the second function is that we take these inputs from the vision, from the vestibular, and then from the peripheral sensory. Our body needs to process these to keep ourselves balanced so that we don't fall down or trip. Etc. So our body has two major components that help us to keep in balance. Okay, the first one is what we call VOR. That's vestibular ocular reflex. The main purpose is that we will coordinate our eye motion with our head motion, just so that we could have good gaze and also have good balance. So the second type we call VSR. That's vestibular spinal reflex. So similarly, our body would generate limb, limbs in you know, arms and leg motion to keep us in balance. So the VSR has one component is to keep our posture. So when we are not moving very much, we need to be able to control our trunk. If it's dysfunctional, we might be like <laughs> falling down or going away. And then number two is when we are in motion. So it kind of like, you know, prevents you from falling when you're walking or running and stuff like that. So there could be many causes of dizziness. Like, for example, like if people have low blood pressure, if not getting blood to your brain, you could feel dizzy. So after a concussion, uh, there are three components that could happen. One is central, where obviously our brain gets shook and cause a contusion, meaning like you got impacted and you might have some swelling and stuff like that. That could happen in centrally in our brain. It could also happen peripherally in our vestibular system in our body. So the third reason that we could have dizziness after concussion uh, could be related to we call these ocular motor problem where our eye motion uh, is not controlled very well. Okay. Uh, also, it could happen to a uh, co articular problem. For example, we talk about uh, cervicogenic uh, dizziness, meaning these joints in our vertebrae in our neck uh, they have these sensors. So when they are affected, they don't function properly, so you could have some dizziness from that. So the goals of vestibular rehab is to restore multiple components that contribute to this system. For example, like our vision or like our eye head motion uh, to be able to be keeping an upright posture and also our balance in standing, sitting, uh, etc. I will list them in the notes below the video. So the ultimate goal of vestibular rehab is to get rid of your dizziness and also make sure you don't fall down. So for adaptation exercises, the main goal is to work on the VOR reflex. We talk about the vestibular ocular rehab. There are four types of exercises and just think about the first two, your neck doesn't move and then the other two, we can move your neck. So the first adaptation exercise is if you have two targets, uh, you can use your finger and I want you to keep your neck stable, don't move them and you're gonna move your eyeball from one finger to the other. So I could move side to side very quickly and I'm not moving anything else, okay? And then you could also do uh, up and down. So I'm a little bit lower because I'm getting closer to the camera. Obviously you could spread them higher and you're gonna look up down as well, okay? And then I will go quite quickly to train your eyes. So the second type, you could take a target that is gonna move, but remember we talk about the neck doesn't move, okay? So I'm gonna try to follow my finger when I move it, just with my eyeball, okay? And it could go up and down as well. So obviously you could try like diagonal as well. So the third type and the fourth type, we're going to move our neck 
Okay, so if you pick a target, for example, my finger here, I want you to fix your gaze on your finger and I want you to move very, very quickly by keeping it there. Okay, so that's side to side. We could go again up and down as well. Okay, so you could incorporate into diagonal, different diagonal as well. So the key is to keep your gaze fixed on your finger no matter what you do with your head or neck motion. Okay, so the fourth type is the most complicated. So you want to turn your head away while your target move the other way. Okay, so I want you to see this. I'm gonna move my finger to this side, but I wanna turn my head the other way, okay? So let's do it a little slower. So you can see when I turn my head, I could still keep my finger there. Then I'm gonna go this way, there back. So kind of like your hand moves, but your neck moves, but your eyes gonna keep fixing on it, okay? So it's a bit tricky. Let's go a little slower there. Okay, so obviously you could do uh, down as well and up. So when you do these adaptation exercises, I want you to start slow and make sure you don't feel too dizzy, okay? If you feel dizzy, for example, when you do it very quickly, I want you to slow it down a little bit, okay? And then you should be able to do 20 to 30 repetitions and then just let it settle. And I would say, normally if you do that quickly, you might get some dizziness, uh, but you should be gone within, I'm gonna say five to 10 seconds or so. Uh, so if you do them and you feel quite dizzy, I want you to, when you're finished, just let it go back to normal before you start again. Uh, you could try to increase the speed only if you're able to handle it, okay? So for habituation exercises, the goal is to get your body used to these stimulus. So let's say if you have a abnormal response uh, to motion, then you wanna put yourself in that situation for many, many times to kind of calm it down, okay? And that's what the goal of habituation exercises. So habituation exercises are used to treat motion sensitivity. It could help you to decrease dizziness, but it also help you to deal with anxiety and this fear of motion. Okay, and then some people they're so afraid and obviously they don't move around very much, which is not very good for your health. So the basic habituation exercise, you could start practicing from lying down to sitting up. Okay, so you repeat that and then also obviously from sit to lie down as well. Uh, while you do this lying down motion, you could try to roll your head while you lie down or turn your head while you lie down. So now if we move on towards in a seated position, Again, you could look up, look down, or turn your head while you're sitting, okay? Uh, or you could also move your head towards the opposite knee uh, as well. So you could practice going down to one knee, and you could practice going down to the other knee. So it moves your head, your neck, and your trunk all together. So when you get better, obviously you could practice some of these exercises in standing. So you could practice from sitting to standing up, uh, in this transition we talk about. So once you're standing, you could turn your body as far as you can, okay? You could try side bending as well, just to train your body with these uh, motions. So then you could do some balance exercises in standing, and then we'll move on to walking, which we'll talk about later. So in static, in not moving, uh, we have few exercises. I had talked about these uh, in my ankle exercises, uh, but I'll just go through it very quickly. So when you stand, if you put your feet together, pretend these are your feet, put them together, and then you just wanna decrease, we call the base of support. You try to keep it balanced for about 30 seconds or so. When you get better, you could close your eyes and then try to keep 30 seconds without falling as well. Okay, so make sure you stand in front of the counter so if you lose balance, you could put your hand down. And then you could try tandem stand. So you put one foot in front of the other or alternate the other way, okay? So you're gonna put it in a tandem stance and do the same things. Try with eyes open and then try with eyes closed. If you could aim for 30 seconds uh, without falling and losing balance, uh, I would repeat that about three to four repetitions. Then the hardest one obviously is doing one leg stand. So if you just stand on one leg, I'll use this hand. So if you stand on one leg and then same idea, go for 30 seconds without falling and then you could close your eyes. Okay, and that is very, very difficult to do. One leg stance, eyes closed. Then after that, you could go to a terrain change. So if we do these, uh, make sure you wear your shoes. I think some people, they're flat feet, you just keep falling. Uh, then you could 
you know, stand on solid ground. Then obviously you could stand on like a foam or something like that, which is softer to give you more challenge. So for dynamic balance exercises, uh, the easier step is to walk. So you could try to walk. Uh, initially, maybe you're scared, so you kind of widen your feet. So bring them close. Okay, so just walk with your feet closer to each other. That's kind of like the first stage. So then you could try something harder, like walking and turning your head while you're walking. Okay, you could also do looking up and down as well. Then you could do something we call scanning. So pretend you are in a, a gallery <laughs> uh, with painting on the side of the hallway. So you could look at one painting as you get closer. Obviously, you turn your body uh, to look at it. And then once you pass a painting, go to the other one and continue walking. So you're kind of training your body to combine your walking, combine your body motion, your neck motion, and your eye motions. So once you are better, you could try something more challenging like walking and stop and then turn okay or you could do walking stop and then turn and then walk again all right so just a lot of sudden motion and changing direction uh, obviously we start with flat ground first okay then you have stairs you could go up the stairs down the stairs with your eye your head motion while you're walking around okay so the ultimate the hardest is like actually walking in a mall so when you walk in a mall you have people walking towards you there are different things you're looking at shops different things so you have multiple kind of we call the stimulus coming towards you and you should be able to maintain your balance uh, and also not get dizziness so in addition you should also do some physical conditioning exercises and walking is actually uh, one of the best way which works on your cardiovascular system uh, your heart your lung works on your musculoskeletal system your muscles your bones etc uh, but it also has to help you integrate all these things we talk about uh, so walking is actually great so if you could try about 20 minute walk uh, without stopping uh, initially you could try like you know once a day and then maybe uh, do a couple days out of the week and once you get better you could do every day so obviously, if you could handle all the walking and all the motions, then you could try to go back to running. And uh, something like sports. Sports actually has a very dynamic way of playing. You, you run different direction, you stop, suddenly you change direction. So that's the ultimate goal that we could get our body back to that state. So another additional exercise you could do is something we call substitution exercise. Uh, so the first one is kind of like what we talked about. So if you have one target, remember we're going to go look and you're going to turn your head to get your eye to be straight to that. Okay. So the second type is harder. So I'm going to move my finger over a bit. So I want you to actually look to that and then I want you to close your eyes and I want you to turn your neck and then open it to see if you are centered in that. Okay. So that we are actually training our our, our control to our, our neck. Uh, we have these sensors that tells us uh, where our joint is in space. So once you close your eyes and move, you rely on these uh, sensors to tell you. So in conclusion, I hope these exercises are helpful to you. But we also get to see how complicated our body has these different systems to keep us uh, in balance and you know not having dizziness as well.